This video is showcase of SSTO that can reach lathe, transform into a submarine, then turn back into SSTO and return back to cabin. This is based on my previous video, where I have created space shuttle with detachable wing section. We can create a modular SSTO in a similar manner. Wings in Kerbal Space Program are infamous for amount of buoyancy. And once you can temporarily separate wings from your craft, you can turn main body of SSTO into a submarine. This pose some extra aerodynamic challenges that are easily mitigated by a launch system on Kerbin. But if we want this submarine to return from late, we need to make an actual SSTO, not a space shuttle. Obviously, there are many different ways to create a craft like that. You can create something similar to a wingless starship, you can just carry a submarine as separate craft in the cargo bay, or you can go a classical road of cargo SSTO space plane. Something around 200 to 300 tons, space plane functionality, main body as submarine, and modified cargo bay to fulfill submarine function. As all Kerbal things, this craft have a quirky name. I am calling it Space and Underwater Commute Executor, or simply Sauce. Well, you know, awesome sauce. While making this video, I have encountered several interesting things about water and buoyancy in Kerbal Space Program. Things that are not often discussed in KSP community, but they are really important in the light of upcoming Kerbal Space Program 2. Somewhere between all those new wacky planets in KSP 2, there can be a low gravity world with not so dense water ocean slash hydrosphere. But before all that, let's actually discuss building techniques, tips and tricks for this SSTO slash submarine in KSP 1. Very important part is the settings. Craft rely heavily on auto strut option from advanced tweakables. Otherwise, separate wing section on a space plane is pretty much impossible even with dual docking ports through a big docking ports. With this SSTO, it is very important to maintain center of mass in the center of the craft. And while it is very important to do prolonged burns in the space, it is even more important to do in a submarine. In Kerbal Space Program, all jet engines do function underwater on carbon and lathe. And this makes it a bit easier for an SSTO part, since we can totally use Rapier engines as propulsion both for actual submarine and an actual SSTO. Four rapier engines are placed on the back of main fuselage. And to compensate this 8 ton counterweight, I have placed all the drills, converter tron, and living quarters for carvels in front of the craft. Fuel tanks are divided equally between nose and tail sections of the craft. This way, at any fuel level, craft will remain perfectly balanced. Cargo bay have built in ore tanks. Ore tanks allow to push weight of submarine over 300 tons and sink it on carbon. At the same time, cargo bay doors pose very important role, since if you open them, craft would gain an extra buoyancy. If balanced properly, this is enough buoyancy to surface a submarine. This allows to sink and surface submarine with one single button press that is opening and closing cargo bays. Deep space propulsion is powered by eight nuclear engines in the engine nacelles. Both engine nacelles and the submarine fairings use nose cone trink to reduce aerodynamic drag. Nose cone is added as only attached part to a fairing, while fuel tanks are added and moved inside from the sides. This is pretty much necessity since any visual fairing construction have a ridiculous amount of drag for a space plane or SSTO. This is why this craft can operate as 300 ton SSTO with only 12 rapier engines. Otherwise you will need either to do the engine clipping or use something about like 30 to 40 rapier engines to brute force 300 tons into an orbit. Fairings on the engine nacelles is pretty much visual representation of air intakes. The actual air intakes are 5 shock cone air intakes, but they are barely visible outside and clipped into a fuel tanks. Wing area of SSTO is one third bigger than it actually looks, so one third of the wing area is inside of spinal fuel tanks. This does not play any role. Weight and drag are pretty much still there. It is like a visual thing, not a gameplay feature. So this was pretty much the main construction points and now we can fly the actual SSTO to lathe and explain everything else. Pretty much as any lathe SSTO, it needs to have a better lift to weight ratio and it cannot rely only on a carbon runway to actually do the whole lifting. But outside of that, this craft is pretty much balanced to fly straight with no input after it reaches speeds over 300 meters per second. Craft have one tilted wing section visually hidden in the fuel tanks. It allows to achieve proper angle of attack at zero degrees. Craft itself do not gain angle of attack before reaching hypersonic speeds. When you are using stability assist on SAS, natural curvature of carbon will actually result in proper ascent. 
With stability assist, you are pointing straight in space-time, while surface slowly curving down on the time axis, increasing your angle of attack with travel distance. SSTO have enough oxidizer to put itself into a suborbital trajectory outside of atmosphere. After that, craft flip and use nuclear engines to achieve stable orbit. It have not enough delta V to go straight to Joule system once in orbit. Refueling in orbit or pit stop at Minmus is necessary to fill up the tanks. Craft lands as an ordinary VTOL thanks to configuration of nuclear engines. Minimus refueling is also a bit of catch-22 for a dual mission. It adds extra 400 delta V to burn. You simply have less speed from Minimus altitude to slingshot to dual than from altitude of low carbon orbit. So it is plausible if only you get way more than this extra delta V required for a burn. Fully fueled SSTO have over 4.5k vacuum delta V. 2.7k of this delta V would be used to burn to Joule. Nothing really special about Joule burn. I will not perform Joule aero break. Instead of aero break, I just do capture burn at 200 km altitude to put craft into elliptical Joule orbit. Elliptical Joule orbit is perfect to start playing with gravity of Joule moons. We need to get more circular orbit on the equatorial axis closer to Lathe. Usually it is a Tylo as your main gravity body in dual system, but this time around all three gravity assists were done through lathe and after that I went for the actual not so graceful lathe aero break, but kinda works coupled with capture burn and one extra lathe aero break and after all the gravity assists, aero breaks and capture burn, I was in perfect equatorial orbit with over 800 delta V to do the deorbit burn. I have one favorite place on Lathe pretty near the equator. If Lathe would have the same topology and geography in KSP2, this would be the place where I want to put my dual space center. It's sort of like flat peninsula, have a great access to water and have a gently sloped mountains that are not really in the way. A bit overshoot my landing spot, but craft have enough delta V to correct such a minor mistakes. As any SSTO, this craft have not a lot of drag to slow down fast on its own, so for the landing I am just using three extra drog shoots, but they are more like a flavor and a swag than something useful to be honest. And after landing it is the time to actually start refueling SSTO and preparing submarine for underwater mission. And just look, look at this beautiful jazz giant stuck in one place of the night sky. Tidally locked planets are totally alien and weird. Can you just imagine any culture developing in the place like that? With all sort of weird like deities to explain celestial behavior of such a place. Yeah, that would be an interesting history. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> With fully loaded ore containers, it was time to start underwater operation. And I have met Kraken on land as I separated my submarine. OBS totally failed to capture this at 60 FPS. Yeah, it is kinda a bit surprising since it looks like KSP tap into separate encoding chip of my GPU. Let's hope this was one of the visual mods that I installed and not the game itself. Because that, that kinda rude, you know, that, that extra chip should actually record stuff while I lose an FPS in actual game on the main chip, you know? Yeah, whatever. Turned out using one of the docking ports will summon Kraken while other just don't. But this was only the beginning of my Kraken adventures. And my submarine just totally ignored open cargo bay doors and sunk like a rock. For a good reason. At this point I was a bit surprised since I totally did not expect KSP to have different buoyancy for a different planets. But this is actually a thing. Something that float on Karen will totally sink on lathe due to lower water density as a result of lower gravity. There is a misconception about lathe having a saltier and denser water compared to Karen, but this does not follow any logic. Surface gravity of lathe is 80% that of Karen, so the same body mass have different weight on both planets. This should require less water buoyancy to float said body on lathe. In simple terms, same mass submarine should sink on Karen, but float on lathe. After all, it have less weight on lathe due to the lower gravity. But we actually see complete opposite of that. And the only explanation is bigger water density on carbon than on lathe. So if the object float both on lathe and carbon, it will appear higher beneath the water on lathe. Which we can totally see on any seaplane and people have tried to explain this with saltier and denser water on lathe. But once again, it is not the point since sinking threshold on lathe is simply lower than on carbon. 
Turned out that 300 ton submarine on Kerbin require only 200 tons of mass to sink on lake. Also, if you account for 80% gravity, the actual weight is only 160 tons on lake. So this is almost half of weight on a Kerbin. And this had very unforeseen side effect for my cargo bay buoyancy system. It is working perfectly on Kerbin, but on lake it is barely effective. So extra buoyancy from opening cargo bay doors should be probably doubled for lathe to be as effective as on Kerbin. So instead of two cargo bays I need to have three or maybe even four. And for this reason I was using my engines as my main attitude control over the cargo bay doors. At this point I was both like what did I expect and wow is actually a thing. So KSP1 simulate different water density due to gravity. KSP2 would have it as well, definitely. 100% at some point. And one can imagine that in KSP2 we can have like an ocean planet with very low gravity. The planet where water have a fraction of a density and act more like an actual secondary atmosphere. So you will need to make like both a spacecraft and space plane and a submarine to reach the surface. Oh, wait a second. Imagine like if, if this planet have like the ice shell. Imagine the ice shell. So you need to like land on ice shell, drill through it and actually <laughs> go underwater to actual surface. Yeah, I want this challenge on my plate. Come on, I want to play KSP too. And if developers don't do this, like, uh, I will just want it myself. With my semi-successful underwater adventure, it was time to return back to Kerbin. And here submarine use power of closed cycle rapier engines to climb ashore. And wing section is used as a sort of a crane to dock with submarine. When I was designing this system, I used hydraulic lifts to precise dock both parts of the craft. During initial series of tests on Kerbin, it was not really necessary, since one can just adjust spring power on landing gear and use them as sort of hydraulic lifts. So I have just scrapped around 4 tons of mass and did not use hydraulic lifts at all. And that was a big mistake. So landing gear on lay surface just slide around. You can kinda control it with a friction control setting, but still one of the parts of the craft will still slide around. And this making docking into a nightmare. Also docking at the exact angle becomes very difficult. And I need to dock at the exact angle to have this dual docking system to work. And I need to kind of perfectly align craft to make flying part, you know, like important parts. And to add an insult to an injury, one of the docking ports just decided to summon a Kraken. Yeah, why not, you know, like, why not to summon Kraken when I like dock perfectly aligned and then I go... So, after like reverting the direction of the docking port in the advanced settings, after like two hours of something around like 15 docking attempts, I was able finally to dock with like wing section in a proper angle and save this craft from like rapid disassembly for Kraken. Yeah, took quite time. But you know, this is like nothing. What is like compared to like, like you just playing a game, come on, comrade. What is this? Like compared to writing the script, recording voiceover, editing video, rendering, uploading, adding chapters, making a thumbnail, coming up with a great title. You know, all this good stuff for YouTube in the last 30 hours of my free time, comrade. This is like nothing. This is just a game. Nevertheless, I was successful even though I was on the verge scrubbing this mission and redesigning the whole craft with all the new data that I have acquired. Launch from lathe is a bit tricky. It is a bit dangerous to go like 120 meters per second to lift from the ground without a runway, so I do spool up jets with brakes engaged before they reach power limit at zero speed, then release the brakes, then go to around like 60 meters per second, swap to close cycle to gain extra power for faster liftoff, and once in the air like on 150-160 meters per second I swap back to air breathing mode and start climbing and accelerating at like 10 to 15 degree angle of attack. Not the most efficient way to gain speed, but we need to clear that reach first. Once the first reach is clear, I swap, swap to 5 degree angle of attack, and this like extra climbing have a um, like side effect of extra altitude, so at around like 10 km mark I will be pointing prograde, just to gain a bit more extra speed that I can gain from the atmosphere. 1.4 km per second is usually enough to reach an orbit with proper amount of vertical velocity, usually like 100 to 150 meters per second is already enough to do that. And close cycle just help to do that. Uh, on Kerbin you could not really skip that, on lathe sometimes you can actually skip even the close cycle if you manage to put yourself in a suborbital uh, trajectory uh, just outside of atmosphere. But this time around use close cycle 
to accelerate your orbital speed, uh, then drain the remainder of oxidizer and do the circularization burn with nuclear engines. Once an orbit craft have like around 2.5 k, k delta v, technically it is an after return to Kerbin, but after like snagging the first thesis from Tyler, I was like, yeah, that's boring, I need to do several mosses, do that, do this, then wait like five years, now I don't want to do this, and I have decided to go to Paul and do extra pit stop, refuel my craft, and then go like direct burns to Kerbin. Why not? I can do that. Why not do that? Plenty of Delta V to get and land on pole. Once fully refueled, I just burn from the dual system. Uh, usually it should take like 1.5k Delta V to return from the dual orbit. Should be like 5 year wait. So, I have burned 900 meters per second to lower my orbit to inner Kerbal system. After craft was on the trajectory to inner Kerbin's Kerbal system, calculated straight burn to Kerbin for another 1.5 kilometers per second, and since craft have like enough delta V left, well, why do like dangerous Kerbin aerobrake when you just can replace it with another big burn? Once captured made two pretty normal aerobrakes similar to a man returns, and as you can notice, craft is a in the clockwise orbit uh, that should make the landing a bit easier because I do prefer like seaside to the mountain side. Nevertheless was a bit slow on re-entry and was landing from the opposite side of runway anyway. Side that I do not really like. And due to delta wings this craft can actually fly in like bizarre angles that makes landing even easier than usual. And yeah, just touch down, push the brakes, submarine SSTO is back where it started and ready for a new mission. New mission to a scrapyard. I need to redesign this thing. Yeah. Nothing to see. Move along, move along, end of the video, bye!